Mike and welcome back. Today we're gonna have a little bit of fun on the channel because I did a thing. I went on YouTube and YouTube gives me some pretty cool little search options that I can do. And one of the things that I can do is go through years of comments and search for specific keywords. And hey kiddo, <laughs> today I went through and I searched for what is. I wanna know what people don't know on the ranch. And it's coming up today on our Wyoming Life. Well, hello. <laughs> uh, before we get started today, I'm very proud to announce to you guys that you can now find me on Cameo.com. It's a really cool service where you can go and actually request a video directly from me for whatever the purpose might be. Maybe you need just a pep talk. Maybe you've got a friend that's got a birthday coming up or somebody has a wedding anniversary and they're huge fans of the channel. Well, you can just send me a quick message and I will make a video for them uh, specifically from you and uh, for whatever you coach me and whatever we need to talk about, that's what I'm gonna do. And it's a very cool way to personalize a gift that can come directly from the ranch to whoever from you. It's on cameo.com, be sure to check it out. All right, so our list today, uh, it's, it was interesting to me because I, I got to thinking about what people didn't know about the ranch. And, and you know, it's hard because I'm here all the time. So I know what some of these terms are that I use, but occasionally I'll get an email or a comment. And somebody will say, what are you talking about? What is that? So it's not a bad idea to take a step back occasionally and just say, hey, you know what? We have people out here that are watching the channel that may not know exactly what is going on. And it's easy to forget that one of our first goals on the ranch is to show people where their food comes from. And being able to talk the talk as well as walk the walk is pretty important. So what I've got is a happy uh, handy dandy little sticky note that I actually stuck to the back of my phone here. And I came up with nine words or terms that, I know it's a weird number, nine, right? Top nine words or ter terms that people did not know what they meant on the ranch. And we'll get started with the first one which is herd. So a comment just said, what is a herd? What makes up a herd? Is it a certain amount of animals or can it be three? Does three make a herd? Well, that's, a, that's actually a pretty good question because what makes up a flock of birds? I have no idea, but I do know that they, we have a herd of cows. In fact, sometimes we have multiple herds throughout the ranch, uh, depending on how we're doing things, who's breeding, what to who, and all this other crazy stuff can actually change the way that we ranch here on our land. So different size herds definitely have Happen. I would say, if you're going to ask me what makes a herd, I would say two cows can be a herd. It doesn't make any difference. It's whatever you want to call it. They may be your best friends, but they're also each other's best friends. And a herd is nothing more than a bunch of friends. Although that one looks like it might have got picked on a little bit. All right, next on our list at uh, number eight, steer. What is a steer? Well, that's actually pretty easy. Uh, I don't have any steers down here, so, oh yes I do, there's some over here. Uh, we do have a few steers and uh, these are actually steer calves, but it'll be pretty easy to tell that they're steers because they're actually just bull cows that are castrated. That's all it is. We take off their testicles one way or another. Sometimes they cut them, we actually ban them. Um, you can look at a cow and tell if it's a steer uh, or, or a, well, actually a male or a female, usually most times, uh, by just looking for their bits. And that's it. It's that simple. Uh, a steer is gonna have that uh, dangling of hair uh, right there in uh, kind of by their abdomen. Um, and no, well, how about this? We've got a twig, but no berries. Along those same lines uh, comes the word heifer, which is one that I probably get quite a bit. What is a heifer? What makes up a heifer? Well, a heifer to us is basically a cow that has not had a calf. It's that simple. It's a female cow that has not had a calf. Once she has her calf, we graduate, we promote her to the status of cows or one of our breeding herd. But until then, she's just a heifer. Now, when they're bred, 
we can have two different things there. We can have exposed heifers, which can be exposed to the cow, but we don't know if they're pregnant. And then we can have bred heifers. And those bred heifers are ones that are preg checked and we know that they're pregnant. Uh, all these guys out here, we do have some exposed heifers. We also have heifer calves, uh, which will be staying here on the ranch and, and moving forward with their life cycle. And if you decide to stick with us, make sure you subscribe, follow along so that you can keep track of where these cows go and how they move on through their lives. This is a little steer here, number 12, but right, uh, where's another one? Let's see if we can find another one. Ah, there's a heifer over here. Number four, this heifer, and we can tell because there's no, no twig, uh, <laughs> she's gonna stay on the ranch her entire life. And hopefully we'll get to see her grow and do her thing. She's not super friendly yet though. All right, back to our little sticky note here. Bull is the next one. Believe it or not, I get the question, what is a bull? More often than not, I get the question is what's the difference between a bull and a steer, which I think we've already kind of explained. A uh, bull is an intact male. He's got all his parts. He's got his twigs and his berries. Uh, the steer, of course, is missing the, the berry part of the equation. Bulls are actually used to repopulate our herd. Uh, for bulls on the ranch, uh, we try to keep the number to about 25 cows per bull. So when we do our breeding, it kind of works out pretty good. Uh, we've got two months usually during our breeding season, and that is enough time for that one bull to service those 25 cows. So bulls are busy guys. However, they do live a lot of the time by themselves in their own little bull world, kind of a bachelor's club. When I searched what is on the ranch, I actually was surprised to see this one. And it was, what is a calf. Is there an age that a cow or a calf is no longer a calf? Is there a, is there a grass? And I, you know, this is funny because to me, um, and the older I get, everybody under the age of 30 is a kid now for some dumb reason. Uh, but for calves, there really isn't a cutoff. Like I said, with the heifers, uh, if we have a heifer calf, um, once she's exposed to the male, then she becomes an exposed heifer, and then eventually a bred heifer, and then eventually a mom and a, and a cow. But as for calves, you know, I don't know. They could, you know, like these steers that we've got out here, they're going to go uh, from here into our feedlot program, and they really do kind of all just stay calves until they leave the ranch. They are steer calves, but they, uh, they're always youngsters to me. There's number one, by the way. That was the very first calf born this spring. Hi, buddy. And off she goes. Could you tell that was a girl? I bet you could, because you're learning. <laughs> you gotta talk the talk before you can walk the walk. All right, maybe it's the other way around. Walk the walk before you talk, I don't know. It's something like that. All right, uh, what is the next one? What number are we on? We are on number one, two, three, four, five. This is number six, uh, is cow-calf operation. What is a cow-calf operation? Uh, when I talk about it quite a bit, and a cow-calf operation is very simply a ranch or a farm that has mom cows that live on the ranch, their most of them their entire lives. Um, they have calves every single year. The ranch sells those calves and that's how the ranch makes money. It's that simple. That's what a cow-calf operation is. Now there's a bunch of other type of operations that you could have. Um, you can have a stalker operation where you might take calves like these ones uh, when they're about uh, six or seven months old. You take them off their moms, you wean them off, and then you sell them to somebody who has a stalker operation. Those stalkers will actually keep them for an extra year and then sell them at the end of the year and make a little bit more money off of them. So that could be a stalker type operation. We're lucky enough to actually have two types of operations here on the ranch. I say we have a cow-calf operation, but the other question that we get is what is a feedlot? This is one that a lot of people um, don't know how to answer because we all have this preconceived notion of these giant feedlots that have thousands of cows in them and they're feeding them and getting them fat before they send them off to slaughter. But here on the ranch, we actually have two types of operations. We have our cow-calf operation, but we also have a feedlot operation. And to show you what exactly a feedlot is, I'm actually gonna take you to one right now.
A quick bonus uh, <laughs> a question that I get quite a bit, and uh, this also comes from folks that actually are just traveling through, but what are those gazelle looking things that I keep on seeing out here in Wyoming? Well, those are pronghorn antelope. Uh, there's one right there. are probably the most uh, widely known uh, deer type creature I guess that you see uh, here in here in Wyoming uh, they are there are a lot of them there's probably more pronghorn than there is people and I do have an episode planned coming up in October uh, because it is pronghorn antelope hunting season October uh, we are actually going to do an episode completely on the pronghorn and what they're all about why they're out here and what they do for the ecosystem and all that kind of good stuff taking a look at some of the wildlife on the ranch uh, but yeah pronghorn antelope I, I don't know how many questions I get about those guys and what they are um, and I have one more bonus that I'm going to throw out there for you guys as well uh, when we get to the end uh, which it, it puts me over my nine number but I just thought of it and it's actually a pretty well well uh, uh, asked question quite a bit too but we'll get to that one first like I said we're going to head back up towards the main ranch and get to our feedlot so I can show you what that is and definitely what it's not And here we are at our feedlot. We affectionately call it finishing school, but this is where the steers, uh, so we're gonna go back, male calves that are born here on the ranch to the moms, which is our cow-calf operation, those steers, or those bulls actually are castrated, they become steers, and then they end up over here in our feedlot program. Uh, they spend about a year kind of just out on pasture doing whatever they wanna do, but the last four months that they're here on the ranch, they end up in our feedlot. Now, like I said, you see a lot of things about feedlots that just don't look good and they're not happy and all that kind of stuff, but I can tell you, and I know this from, from seeing these guys for years on end, being in this feedlot system, this is the place to be on the ranch. This is, they're the kings of the world over here. They get everything that they want. They get corn and oats and barley every day. They get their hay ground up and fed to them. Everything short of a bathrobe and a massage happens over here in the feedlot. So on this side, we have what we call the B team, and this is the A team. Uh, once our steers are about 800 pounds, they're eligible to come here into the feedlot. Uh, they start out on the on the B team where they stay for two months. They get up to about 1,000 pounds, and then they switch over here to the A team where they gain another 200 and end up at about about 1,200 pounds before they leave the ranch and come back uh, for sale through the farm store and online sales. So this is actually what they get. This is a mixture of corn, oats, and barley, along with ground hay, which uh, they just love. They just love hanging out and eating it. So they have access to it. They get hundreds of pounds of it a day. And uh, yeah, they seem to like it. So along with our bonus what is question, we have the number one thing that people see on the ranch that they don't know what it is, or they hear about it and they don't know what I'm talking about. And for that, we have to go back across the road into the AeroQuip and probably the heart of the AeroQuip corral system. This is our AeroQuip Corral. Um, there's a lot of parts to it. And in fact, if you really wanna to get to know this thing, you can actually go back and check out some videos. Uh, I think it was like a three video series in which I actually put all this stuff together. Uh, but AeroQuip is a company that makes and provides uh, cattle handling facilities. And those usually start with corrals, which is another question I get quite often. What is a corral? Well, a corral is just four fences put up to make a box or a circle or whatever kind of cool shape you want to make and where you can hold cows, where you can sort cows, where you can do all kinds of things. But the number one question, the number one what is that I get on the ranch is what is a chute? No, not that kind of chute. Uh, 
not an S-H-O-O-T, but a C-H-U-T-E. This is a chute. And we talk about it all the time, but it really never enters my mind that people might not know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about a chute. And basically a chute, all it is, is another area for these cows to pass through. But what this does is actually holds them. And we very rarely show this whole contraption without a cow in it uh, when we're using it here on the ranch. But this is kind of a unique opportunity to take a look. It's really bright out here. Uh, take a look and see what this thing is all about. So when we take a look at this chute, uh, we can start right up here at the front, which is kind of a cool place to start because it's one of the really neat features about this thing are these bars. Uh, these bars, and I'll show you from the other end, when a cow enters the chute, they can see through it and they think they can move through it. What we can do is use this bar right here, this handle, to open and close the front of that chute. That way, when the cow comes in, we close it and we've got her or him trapped. The other thing that we can do is actually squeeze this chute. And this is something, if you know who Temple Grandin is, uh, really did revolutionize the cattle handling industry uh, when she realized that squeezing a cow down actually calms them down. So for this part, we're actually going to go back inside the chute because I have a handle out here where I can control the width of the chute. And I can squeeze it all the way down to less than a foot, actually. Uh, I don't know what I would be bringing in here, snakes or something, I'm not exactly sure, but I can make it that narrow. And what that does is when I bring a cow in, I can squeeze it down just a little bit, and that makes that cow feel a lot more comfortable inside the chute because there's pressure put on both sides. That's pretty cool technology. And it's it's something that normal, I guess I normally wouldn't have thought of, but being able to squeeze them down, it's like give them a hug, makes them feel better. Also on the chute, we've got tons of access to that cow once we've got them in here. We've got gates, we've got ways to look at their feet. We can pop open this bottom gate. We can take a look at feet or whatever else we want to in there. We've got panels on this side so we can get into their neck and head. We also have a holder that we can push down so that cow's head will fit right in here. So we can do anything we need to to her face or her ears, possibly give her new ear tags, whatever that may be. So that is the chute. Probably one of the most important pieces of equipment on the ranch besides the gator, which I get that occasionally too. What is the gator? The gator is my little side by side that I cruise around in. But <laughs> this thing, very important to the ranch. As we get ready to wrap things up today, I have one bonus question for you. It's not one that I get very often, honestly, and it's probably because I don't show this particular thing very much in videos because I know um, well, I'll get a lot of, you know, what is this, but I can imagine that it might make, actually make a really good topic for a video, uh, but it has gonna, it's gonna have to wait until winter. So you're cruising down the road in Wyoming and you see a fence like this one, which is a really weird fence to see. It's really short. It really has no ends. It's not keeping any animals in. What is it for? Is it just a place for birds to perch? Well, today you're gonna find out. The whole purpose of this fence is obviously not to keep any animals in. It's not doing that. It's not keeping any animals out. But what it is, is keeping snow from drifting across the highway, which is just about 100 feet down that way. Without this snow fence, because the land raises above where the highway goes, it actually cuts through a little hill right here, that would fill in with snow. All we have to do is not even get a few inches of snow and enough wind to move it, and we would block off the highway. So that's why these are so important in Wyoming. You're gonna see them all over the place, but no, they're not bleachers for, for you know, rabbits to sit and watch the jackalope races. They are snow fences, and that is their only purpose here on the ranch. It's odd to have something on the ranch that's only good for one thing, but that's what it is, snow fences. So that's it guys for today. I hope that you might have learned something. If you didn't learn something, you also, you also if you didn't learn something, you weren't trying because you can also learn what other people don't know. 
it's amazing to me that how easy it is to just think, hey, this is what I do, this is my life, and I can just talk about it and people are going to know what I'm talking about. It's like talking to a, 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 a doctor, right? And then they start talking about things and it's like, whoa, 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 what are you even talking about? The explanation of what's happening and why it's happening is so important. Um, and if you're talking to people about where their food comes from, make sure that they know what you're talking about because if they don't, they're not going to listen. Trust me, I've learned that one along the way. Thanks for hanging out with me once again. If you would like a personalized message from me, go to Cameo.com. going to be a lot of fun and a great way to connect with people. And anybody that's a fan of the channel can utilize it and, and, and do some really cool things with it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, in the meantime, uh, we do have some pretty cool videos coming up for you guys. October is on the way. Ghost Story Month. Oh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Hunting season. All kinds of crazy stuff coming up. So make sure you subscribe. Follow along as we explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary right here on our Wyoming life. What is that?